Hi again, everyone. I have a message here from Anonymous, and here's her story. Hello, Ollie. Please feel free to make a video if you wish. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I have had little contact with my parents over the last two years, and absolutely no contact with them, my siblings, or my extended family members for nearly a year now. Sometimes it still makes me feel angry, sad, and overwhelmed to have no family to call my own. But it's still better to be effectively orphaned than to withstand the abuse. I am female in my mid-40s. My dad teased me from the time I was a kid about tippy-toeing around the house. One of the last times I saw him, he said, You're what, 45 years old and you're still tippy-toeing around the house? There must be something wrong with you. Why do you do that? Well, Ollie, I'll tell you why. He made me. He worked late into the night since before I was born, and I can imagine him trying to sleep in when I was a toddler, toddling around the house. I am sure I was screamed at to be quiet because we are often screamed at, and, my, and an aunt once told me he used to knock us kids around when we were toddlers, and I learned to tiptoe to avoid his and my mom's wrath for making noises. I tiptoed through my 17-year marriage to an abuser as well. I even tiptoe when, I, when I'm by myself. I am constantly trying to break the habit. I have nothing to be scared of anymore, and I have to tell myself every day I'm safe. Right, because you ultimately, by that abuse, is trying to make yourself invisible. And that's what the narcissist does, is you try to make yourself invisible. They don't even have to do it. They get you to the point where you don't want to deal with them so much and you don't want to catch their wrath. All you do is try to make yourself invisible, either by not talking, you know, um, escaping into your own head, or physically tiptoeing around the house. My mom rarely looked me in the eye, and when she did, it was with a hateful rage, unless she was feeling sorry for herself. And when my dad looked at me, it was with other hate and disgust, unless we were around other people. Then he took credit for me having his brains and learned everything I knew from him. I was a high achiever, and I see now that I acted for 40 years like I was in a lifelong series of show and tell for my parents, bringing each achievement, medal, honor, award to show it to them in order to make them, make them like me, to make them like me. Nothing I accomplished was ever good enough. There was always fault to be found or some way to tease me or cut me down. Looking back at my baby photos, I see my mom dressed me like a boy. I had a shaved head, dressed in blue. It makes me sick to know the truth so many years later. Boys have more value in our home growing up, I'm sure. My mom would, would say things to me like, I love you, but I don't like you. Oh my God, is that a popular line? Is that a popular line? In my house, they used to say it to me. They used to say it to my mother and her sisters used to say it to each other and to Virginia. I love you, but I don't like you. Bullshit. Bullshit. My dad told my siblings and I never to have kids because we ruined his life. That would be famous if that would be famous if it weren't true. If it were, that he would be famous if it weren't for us. He said that having us was the worst thing he ever did. In my 20s, I must have minimized his words because I never understand why I didn't have kids because you were making yourself invisible. I was taught by my, by my family to minimize the words of others. But the truth is that he did say it and his actions and abuses over the years matched it and proved it true. When I've told people the truth about how my dad said he felt more than once, they said I was too sensitive or surely he didn't mean it. Or parents say things they don't mean all the time or kids don't come with instruction manuals. My response to them is none of, the, none of his kids had kids. My parents have no grandchildren. Go figure. My mom and, and my dad allowed others to abuse us as well. My siblings, especially my sister and I, were called names and beaten by everyone. Babysitters, aunts, uncles, older cousins, grandparents. Sometimes I could barely sit down at school because of the welt marks from my dad's big-ass belt buckle. My sister went no contact from the aunts and uncles who teased her about her freckles or being skinny and was labeled by everyone as, being, as everyone else as being trouble. She moved out of the house at 14. 
whenever I got upset and defended myself against their tyranny, I was labeled as crazy. I have had the most amazing jobs where crazy just isn't hired. But still, my dad has convinced the rest of his family and friends that I'm crazy, just as he has diagnosed cousins my age who have also established and maintained no contact with the family. We had an uncle who used to strangle other family members at holiday turkey table over card games. My brother is the golden child and teases, and teases me and cuts me down publicly if he feels he has something high and mighty to say. I developed early, about age 11, and by the time I was in grade 9, I had a fully developed woman's figure. Many aunts, many uncles and aunts and cousins teased me about my breast pubic hair, which I later began, began pulling out, I realize now due to shame, and like cutters cut, to cause physical pain in ourselves in order to numb the worse, to numb the worse emotional pain. And because I looked too old for my age, I was labeled a slut. I hadn't even been kissed. Writing about it hurts so bad that it makes me cry even still to this day. I remember thinking I had to be a good girl. I tried so hard. My mom would say she went through the same thing from the same people. My mom made me wear a, wear a bra in grade six and I was teased relentlessly at school. The boys chased me and pulled on my bra squab or squeeze or punch my breast. Meanwhile, I lost all my girlfriends because they too called me a slut. I had no one to turn to, and for the next year or more, those same boys tackled me on my way home, even before leaving school grounds, trying to get my pants, trying to get down my pants and up my shirt. I'm doing the right things to heal. I'm in therapy. I'm feeling better. The days that I feel most at peace are the most peaceful days I have ever known. It's worth something. I don't keep contact with people who say, suck it up. Most of the time I hear from, I hear that from alcoholics. Question, questioned once, I questioned one such person who drinks Caesars for breakfast with, what, suck up, su suck it up through a Caesar straw? I'm going to do what you do, Ollie. Just say my family died in a plane crash. Thanks for all you do. Your insight is incredible. Sincere, sincerely, anonymous. All of this is a result of you trying to make yourself invisible since you were a kid. All of it. Because you won't fight back, you won't, nobody will help you, you're all alone, and you're, almost, and you're trying to make yourself invisible. The thing in school with the boys, that's just boys' hormones reacting. At the time, it seems bad, and it is bad. They shouldn't be doing it. Okay, but that's not necessarily narcissism. That's just crazy boys' hormones. Girls always go after the first girl to develop. They always label her a slut, a whore, or this or that. And that's just basic female jealousy. That's female competition, especially in school. And it's brutal. Charlene went through the same thing because she developed early as well. She has the exact same stories. The exact same stories. So, you know, what your father and your parents' tactics have done is forced you to become invisible. And that's what the narcissist does. You're not only physically tiptoeing, you're mentally, you, 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 we mentally tiptoe around. Because we want to be seen, we, 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 we don't want to be seen, we don't want to be heard, we want to make as little noise as possible and stay a blank slate. That way, they don't attack us. Because you are always, always, always. And this is what people don't understand, okay? How we are always on guard. That guard never drops, never drops. And it's stressful and it is emotionally emptying to have to constantly live that way. But that's the reality of how we live physically and mentally tiptoeing through life. And that's all set up by the narcissist. So thank you for your story. I hope it, I, I hope this helped. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, 
or you'd like to set up a Skype chat or have a private video made, you know what to do with the email and you do know what to do with my email and PayPal links in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.